Really getting sick of old people telling me how they had how bad they had it when I when they were a kid. We all know you walked up a hill both ways barefooted in the snow. We get it. It's about time we come up with some new stories for our grandkids. It took, we had a dial-up modem. It used to take us up to four minutes to get on the internet. So good. that's all I got for that. Very good. Give me a hand. That was excellent. Good. Marv is just starting out. He's in my beginning class right now. It's probably too soon, too early to tell what's going to happen with Marv, but he wants to succeed. He wants to be a comic, and that's very important. I know when I started doing comedy, there were probably 15 people that started at the time I did, and some of them probably were funny, or at least they started out faster. But you have to be able to go back over and over and over, and it's all about whether you want it bad enough. The stereotype I was thinking about it backstage about women being bad drivers. Do we have any bad drivers here? No. No, I'm the only one. I suck. <laughs> I'm gonna admit it because you're just ladies. I am so bad, I have actually gotten the finger from someone inside my own car. <laughs> I am. I, am. <laughs> I was like, Grandma, cut it out. <laughs> when I got into comedy, it was pretty much a personal. Thing. I wanted to do something different, and I was a stockbroker at the time, a very serious profession, and I didn't feel fulfilled, and I just wanted some type of outlet that was something just entirely different and fun. And I didn't want to be 50 and say, God, I wonder what would have happened if I ever got on stage to be a comedian. Thinking of that, I was actually thinking about getting um, breast implants, but do you know they cost like five grand? I'm way too cheap. I'm just going to get a tattoo on my boob of a bigger boob. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be way better. I wanted to be able to share what I had learned and help people that were coming up along the way. So uh, when there was an opportunity at the Comedy Castle, um, I asked Mark Ridley if he would think about me teaching class. And it's been about at least 10 years. I've probably had 300 students, if I was to guess. So it was really good. All of it, you had an idea, you had a concept, you have a point of view about it. Does he have a point of view about all those things? An angle to it? That's good. I don't ever get bored of it. Every class has different people and they have their own personalities and it's really exciting, like every single time it's exciting when there's somebody new in class that's really excited, really eager, does really well on stage. It's like they're all my children and I get to see them grow up and walk their first steps and it's great. She's a great teacher. She, you know, teaches, um, you know, great joke writing style, really, you know, really informative, really educational. You know, she can't teach anybody how to be funny if you're not funny, you know, but she can teach you how to write jokes. If you're using a convention of some type, it has to be identical. For example, if your joke is about, you know, they, they used to have, they have great advertising slogans for stuff like toilet paper and all that, like don't squeeze the Charmin or just do it or can you hear me now? We should have that for a sex videotape. You know, why don't they have advertising? like then what you have to do is it's got to be identical you got to go you know like please squeeze my charmin and um suck it. uh just suck it and can you fuck me now or whatever i know people always say those that can do those that can't teach i don't know if i believe that because in order to be a good teacher you have to have done it yourself and when i tell students things it's because i've done them and they didn't work if you don't handle a heckler right, they're going to get the best of you. It's because I've had that experience. How about give me two more inches? Oh, good. I'll give you five. Very good. That's good. You're done. Your time's up. I got to finish. Come on. All right, all right. I'm on camera. All right, but if this was a contest, they'd make you stop. I just want you to know that. I wasn't thinking of teaching instead of doing stand-up. What happened along the way is that I realized through doing all this writing in class that that is the part I really enjoyed. And it's nice to be able to still teach the comedy class and still have stand-up as an outlet even though I don't go on the road and do stand-up every week anymore. Watching my students, whether it's Jay Chris or whether it's Brandon or Marv, just start moving up and succeeding and I hear that my students are headlining or they're going to be on TV. It's the same kind of high as you get from actually being on stage yourself. Okay, I just had a birthday, 42 years old. Thank you very much. Very proud. 42, I know what you're thinking. I look young, right? Yep, it's because I got the breasts of a 12 year old. Thank you. I. <laughs> That was Brendan, he's 17. Thank you. <laughs> Being 17 years old is not a really great thing to do or be 
when you're trying to do stand-up comedy because you have to get people to believe that you're going to be mature enough to tell jokes that are funny. Our next comedian coming out, young guy, go easy on him. He's been performing about a year, youngest performer here today. Please put your hands together for Brendan Lemon. Welcome, Brendan Lemon. It also is a help. People will think, oh, he's, let's laugh at him because he's young, and he, you just try to encourage him and things like that. But as a comedian, you take what you can get. Yeah, being 17 sucks. Uh, you're old enough to be tried as an adult, but still not old enough to buy porn. Brendan came to my class because his uncle, Mike, was in my class. And Mike thought that Brendan would be really funny and it'd be a very good outlet for him because he's sort of an off the beaten path kind of kid, sarcastic. He's not the captain of the football team rah-rah kind of kid. I didn't really hang out with people a lot. I was a very angry kid. I, in fact, punched a hole in my wall one day in my door. Now, I won't do that anymore, but I'll punch a hole through someone's head in words. Notice you guys were laughing at something. What were you laughing about? It was about how sexy I am. Really? My number is 455. No, I'm just joking. Never in your dreams. Just write that down. Thank you. I was a bit apprehensive about having somebody so young in my class, because it's an adult class. And the first time I went up there to practice my material, she looked at me and said, Brendan, that sucks. Get off stage. And after crying for a little while, I came back. I just said, but you know, you need punchlines, and what's the setup, and shorten this. And he came back the next week with all this stuff. Plus, there are little things that, you know, you wouldn't realize, such as how you move the mic stand, how you should thank someone, things like that, that you wouldn't normally learn without a fair amount of time and probably embarrassment. Brendan, in, during class, did have quite a transformation. My parents, I think now, are very happy that I did comedy, that I do comedy. It takes a lot of get guts to get up and do that. I couldn't do it. <laughs> you couldn't pay me enough to do it. So I got a lot of respect for somebody who can do that, and, uh, and Brennan's really pulled it together. Where do pharmacists get names for drugs like retinol, Excedrin, Viagra, and stuff like that? You know, you'd think they'd call them like wrinkle gone, headache off, and penis up. <laughs> I guess I did kind of stop taking Ritalin about the same time I started doing stand-up. Basically, when your mind is bouncing off the walls, you're bound to run into a funny idea and it's sooner or later. And I lost a lot of the side effects of taking Ritalin, which is like getting headaches and things like that. Stand-up comedy is the hardest drug out there. I'm performing in front of whoever shows up to the photo gallery, so all this morning I've been politicking around, trying to get people to come. Just like I do every other time I do stand-up, but this time it's at school, so it's a little better. In, in a sense, it's almost more pressure than at Ridley's because it's my peers, and if I really suck, you know, I still have to deal with what they tell me. Well, these are, this is a photo gallery. What they do is they take all the pictures that photos taken this year, at least the good ones, and then they put it all up. And they have like a DJ come and they have food. And it's really cool. They do it about twice a year, once a semester. I slowly developed the knack for just repeating that one line to myself as if like it was my mantra right before going on so that it would come out instinctively. And after that first line comes out, if you've rehearsed your act enough, it just goes out. You might not even be knowing what you're saying. It feels like almost being in the ocean when you got this big wave coming at you. Yeah, you know, it really sucks going to the largest school in the U.S. It does. We have 5,000 students and four security guards. <laughs> we have 5,000 students, four security guards, and one golf cart between them. <laughs> but if you hit that wave wrong, you're going to stumble and fall and look really bad. You know what else I like about this school, though? 
those career recognition aptitude program tests. Yeah, or crap. <laughs> no, but I like this school though, I do. Because of wrestling. Yeah, what? wrestling. Whoa. Unfortunately, no one else does though. Because, you know, when you guys come to a meet, you're expecting to find Hulk Hogan, Macho Man Randy Savage wrestling. Not two guys in leotards looking like they're having sex Woo! with each other wrestling. <laughs> Apparently someone actually likes to see that. If you hit it just right and it washes over, you get this feeling that something is flowing through you. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. You guys have been really great. You get people who are big time surprised. You talk to them after the show and they're like, man, I thought you were going to suck. Put it together so well. Thanks, man. Very nice. Yeah, thanks, man. Very nice. Nicely done. Thank you, man. Did you laugh? I did. That's I, good. I, I got a good, good chuckle out of it. Is that good, Cassie? That was amazing. I love you, Brendan. You know, all the girls come up to him afterwards and they want to they wanna be with him. And I, I think that's probably an enjoyable part of comedy. I love you too. I can't. I'm actually already engaged to somebody. Have my babies. Oh, that's okay. I'll do that. Okay. <laughs> Brandon could have a very bright future in comedy because he's very unique and original. He has a different point of view. He is young, so he's going to appeal to a young audience, which is starving for comedy. Um, I could see Brandon going places, definitely. I think he has a, a gift for it. I'd like to see him develop that. And if it's uh, in the big plan, if the guy wants him to do it, I think it'll work out well. I mean, he can work his craft for 10 years, and he'll still be less than 30 years old, and he still has 30 years ahead of him. And I am a, the type of person who would do just about anything to do what I want to do. That's so funny.